I don't know why more people aren't explaining and telling people about this, but I'm here to tell you about it. My name's Wayne Turner. I've been brokering, selling, doing everything when it comes to real estate for nearly 30 years. And I'm excited to share with you. I'm gonna walk you through this house. This is a foreclosure. This foreclosure is in great condition. And this is an example of houses just like this all around the country where you can go to these properties. I'll put a link below where you can actually go and see at foreclosure.com. It's a site that you can see every single foreclosure by zip code, city, county, and state. And yes, these properties you can purchase for no money out of pocket. The banks can pay your closing cost. All you truly need is a little money to do an appraisal, 400 bucks, and a home inspection, $400. If you have $800, you can buy this house. I know, I know, I know. I said no money out of pocket. And then I said $400 and then I said another $400. That's $800, right? But here's the deal. You do not have to do a home inspection on a property. You do, however, have to have an appraisal done on the property because the bank's gonna make sure that what you're paying for the property, you're not overpaying for the property and the home and the property itself is actually worth what you're buying it for. So you have to have $400 for the appraisal. But here's the thing, the, the appraisal, that $400 can be rolled into the closing cost that the bank can pay for you. The home inspection, you don't have to do a home inspection. I personally would never buy a house without doing a home inspection, but if you truly wanted to purchase a house just like this one for no money out of pocket, you can do so. There's homes like this all around the country. I'm gonna walk you through it and I'm gonna share with you exactly how to do just that. Now, as I walk you through this foreclosure, you're gonna see, wow, this house is in really good condition, which is very rare. Most foreclosures, they're in distress. They have holes kicked in walls. They smell really bad, like pet and smoke. This house right here, I mean, like it doesn't even need to be painted. It's got a big open cathedral ceilings you can see. It's got a stacked stone wood burning fireplace, lots of windows, loads of natural light. How you purchase these homes is through a USDA loan, United States Department of Agriculture. It's the government and why in the world they're not shouting this to the rooftops to let people know this is how you buy an affordable home. Now, a lot of people say, well, Wayne, how much is this house that you're walking through? How much is that home? This home that I'm walking you through. It's a three bedroom, two bath house. It's just under 1300 square feet. There's no garage, but it is three bedrooms and two baths. And it's at $248,000 right here in the metropolitan New Orleans area. But here's the thing, like I'd mentioned, go to foreclosure.com, you don't even have to do that. I'm gonna put a link below. You click on that link, it's gonna send you straight to the website. And on that website, you can sign up if you want and it gives you free access to all these properties. Now listen, you have to have a 620 or higher credit score. And those brick floors are awesome. My ADHD kicks in a little bit. You have to have a 620 or higher credit score. You have to have two years on the job. You have to have paid your taxes and show that you've paid your taxes. And bottom line is, they're gonna look at your debt. What do you have going out on a monthly basis? They don't look at so much your total debt. They look at what do you have coming in as far as income and then what's going out. And quite simply, they use your gross income. Now, there is some caveats to this, meaning that in most areas, you can't make over $110,600. If you're a, a couple that's married, you're a single person, and if you have uh, three or fewer kids. Now, if you have five or more, your household of five or more, then they bump that price range up. They bump that income, if you will, up to in the 140s. But you can purchase a house just like this this house doesn't need anything. And there's homes like this all around the country. So what we do, my office, you go to contactwayne.com. You can book a free call with me. I literally call you. I reach out to you. I take 10 minutes and I say, hey, here's what you need to do. We connect you with a lender. We get you approved. We connect you with an agent in your hometown, in your area, and we get you in a home. So you can literally, from the time you're watching this video to the time you can be moving into your new home with keys to your new home, can be 60 days. Now bear with me as I walk you around, I'm gonna show you the house, I'm gonna share with you how to get this type of home, how to get this type of loan. It's USDA, it's a rural development, meaning that you can't be in the heart of a major metropolitan city. You can't be in the heart of Seattle, Washington, or uh, uh, Denver, Colorado, Atlanta, Orlando. You have to be typically 30 to 45 minutes outside, which is, the suburbs, if you will. So if you want to live in or willing to live in or would like to live on, on the outskirts and you're okay commuting to work or 
just being on the outskirts, then this is an opportunity that perhaps you should take a look at. Like this property here, brick floors, nice cabinets, stainless steel appliances. It even has the refrigerator left in it. It's got a pantry. I always tell everyone, if you're gonna build a house, you're gonna remodel, you're gonna do anything, always make sure you got a pantry. And then I also like this, check this out. This is a, a friend's door, if you will, or a side door. So you don't have to go through your front door all the time. You actually have a door. Now, I know what you're thinking. Man, look at that backyard. Let's take a look. So this backyard, I mean, y'all, this, I have a 2,600 square foot home. I'm not saying that to brag or anything, but I have a 2,600 square foot home. I wish I had this much place to park and had this much driveway. This is pretty cool right here, right? So not only you have the driveway to park, you have the storage building, you have all this patio, and you can see how easily it would be to fence in this particular property. Now, if you're self-employed, you write a lot of stuff off. If you're watching this, say, Wayne, I'm a brick mason, I'm self-employed, I'm a real estate agent, I'm self-employed, or whatever it may be where you're self-employed, you're 1099, right? You're an independent contractor. Well, what they do there is they look at, okay, what did you bring in? What did you write off? A lot of times we write off the mileage. A lot of that can be added back in, but if you're self-employed, you've been self-employed for two years, then you qualify for these types of loans and you owe it to yourself to at least look into it. There's no cost and no obligation to at least talk to someone by going to contactwayne.com or whomever. You don't have to do any. You can call your lender, your agent, it doesn't matter. But most importantly, I just think it's important for everybody to know and hear and watch these videos to know and be educated. There's so much information out there on the web. There's so many videos about investing in real estate and how to invest in real estate. But there's not a whole lot of stuff out there for consumers. People like yourself, if you're watching this and you just want to purchase a house because you've never owned a home before, maybe in your 20s and 30s or even 40s, maybe you're even in your 60s and 70s, yes, you can still purchase a house. And if you're 65 and you're watching this, yes, you can purchase a house and they will give you a mortgage for 30 years if that's what you wanted to do. So a question I also get is, Wayne, I filed bankruptcy three years ago. You can actually purchase a house this way as long as you're two years out of your bankruptcy discharge date. And bottom line, that just means that you filed bankruptcy. You hit hard times, things happen, you lost a job, you got cut back in hours. You know the bedroom, by the way. Uh, you went through a divorce. Those will kill your credit in a minute. If you have bruises on your credit, and the lenders, I'm gonna back through this room, the lenders that I work with, they actually will look at your credit and say, hey, your credit score has to be 620. You're, right now, you're hovering around a 590, but here's what they do. They do what they call a rapid rescore. They work and counsel with you, if you will, and they show you and share with you exactly what you can do to get your credit score up to a 620, and they give you an estimate of how long, how fast that will actually take. And that's why I say a lot of times, you may be at a 570, 580, and I tell everyone, you need to know your own credit score. And listen, I think it's crap, personally, that you have to pay for your credit score, but you can go to freecreditreport.com, you can go to Credit Karma, you can go to myfico, M-Y-F-I-C-O.com. You need to know what your credit is, and you need to know what all three credit reports say, because the lender's gonna pull a tri-merge credit report. And that means they pull from TransUnion, Experian and Equifax, and they're gonna look at all three of those. So you wanna make sure when you pull your credit, you also look at all three reports. Now people often ask, Wayne, can you buy investment property? What if I wanted to buy something like a duplex or tri triplex, quadruplex? Yes, you can actually purchase a duplex, a quadruplex, triplex, you can purchase investment property. But here's the thing, here's the catch. You have to live in at least one of the units. So for example, if you purchase a property, it's a duplex, then you have to move into one of those units. So if it's occupied by two separate tenants on each side, they have to be given notice once you transfer everything goes to, you know, deed and title goes into your name, you're now the rightful owner, you have to tell those people, hey, you have 30 days to vacate because I have to move and live into one of the units. Now, here's what's really cool. You only have to live in it for one year. After you live in it for one year, you can turn around and lease that property. Now, you just bought a duplex, triplex, quadruplex for 800 bucks out of pocket. You have somebody else helping you pay your monthly mortgage. And after a year, you can go purchase a house through a conventional loan if you want and use that as an investment property. And perhaps you're in your 20s and 30s and next thing you know, 20, 30 years goes by and you're in your 50s like me 
and you have a property that's paid for that's giving you cash flow every single month. So think about that. Now, as I'd mentioned this property, I'm just gonna show you around. Like literally the carpets just need to be clean. They're not new, but you can tell they could be clean. Walk-in closet with a light. Uh, it does have a tray ceiling. I, I, this is one of the cleanest foreclosures I've ever been in. Bathroom here. And listen, it's nothing crazy fancy, but it's a clean house. It's in great shape. And, and you know, it, it's troubling for anyone to have fallen on such hard times that they lose their home. But oftentimes, and we see this a lot, is 50% of marriages end in a divorce. And when you purchase a house together and you have two incomes working to pay for the mortgage, oftentimes when you go through a divorce, the house either has to be sold or one person has to buy out the other one. And if they can't keep up the mortgage payment, then their option is to sell the property, which I tell people, if you can sell it, if you're going through hard times, you need to sell a property. You probably have more equity in your home than you realize, try to sell it instead of just letting it go back to foreclosure. But in cases like this house, it's a great home for someone to purchase. And listen, it's not just foreclosures. I don't want you to think that these loans are only for foreclosures. These can be for brand new homes, pre-existing homes, a home that's 20, 30 years old, it's occupied that somebody bought two or three years ago, somebody bought 20 years ago. As long as your income does not exceed that $110,600. But it's so important to also know that that income limit is based on your county. So I'm going to put a link below where you can go to usda.gov and when you click on that you'll be able to see okay here's my county in my state here's my maximum amount of money that I can make to purchase a house like this. Now I'm going to step outside because it's a beautiful day and there's a lot less echo when I'm out here. So it's important to know your closing cost on any transaction is going to run you anywhere from three to three and a half percent. That's a good rule of thumb. Don't let anybody tell you it's going to be six percent. They're lying to you, and I'll debate that with anybody. Three to three and a half percent is all your closing costs are going to be. The bank, I can promise you, almost every single time are happy to pay your closing costs. Now, what that means is oftentimes if they're paying your closing costs, you're going to have to pay full price for the property. And even sometimes if the price is right on the property, we'll see homes get added to. So if they're asking $248,000, you're going to have to pay three, three and a half percent of that amount towards closing costs. You ask the seller to pay that for you. And a good real, where a good real estate agent does come in handy. You don't have to have an agent to buy a house, but this does come in handy to make sure they ask for the closing cost and they negotiate that offer with you. Because a lot of times the sellers, in this case the bank, they don't want to pay all the closing costs. They'll pay part of the closing costs. Well, if you don't have a whole lot of money to come out of pocket, but yet you have great credit or mediocre credit at a 620 and two years on the job, you can buy the house. So what happens is, you're now needing closing costs. The banks will pay your closing cost. So if it's 248, 248,000, you can bump it up to 250. It's not gonna make that much of a difference on your payment. And listen, on a $248,000 house like this, a lot of people say, well, you know, what will my payment be? And I always suggest to people, go to Google and type in mortgage payment calculator. When you go to Google and type in mortgage payment calculator, you can put in the amount that you put down, it's going to show you what today's rate is, which is about seven and a quarter percent as of this viewing of this video. And bottom line, it's going to show you what your payment's going to be. So on a house like this, your payment's going to be about $2,000 a month, $2,100 a month. That includes taxes and insurance and everything, $2,100 a month. Now, I know that there's a lot of people out there going, that's a lot of money each month. But there's a lot of people going, I pay that in rent each month, or I pay more than that in rent each month. And that's why I say it's important for everybody to know. That's why trying to shout to the rooftops, if you will, on these videos to let everyone in, in, in God's country, if you will, know about these types of loans. So look, thank you for watching. I'm so blessed that you found this information beneficial. You can go to contactwayne.com, book a call. You don't have to. You can contact anybody, a local lender, credit union, whatever it may be, but ask them, do they do USDA, United States Department of Agriculture, rural development loans. And if they do, they can do these types of loans. If you need a recommendation, go to contactwing.com. You can book a 10 minute call with me. We'll get you connected. We'll get you linked up and you can purchase a house just like this one and be in your new home in 60 days.